So my first ever adult size racket was this, the Bablat Drive Z Lite. It's basically just a nine ounce pure drive with a slightly lower 66 flex. It's got that old tighter Bablat 16 by 19 pattern and it shaped the way that I play tennis. After that, I transitioned to the Aero Pro Drive GT and then later to the 2013 version, which I used up until 2018. It's safe to say that I am a Bablat guy. I learned on stiff powerful, spin-friendly rackets, and that's just the reason my forehand looks the way it does. The thing is, Bablat just doesn't make rackets quite like this today. These old Bablats, they were stiff, they had control-oriented string patterns, they were significantly less vibration dampening tech built into the frames, and we also saw lower twist weights with higher swing weights. New Bablats are a lot more muted. They have wretchedly open string patterns, which leads to, to me at least, a disappointingly disconnected and launchy experience compared to the rackets that I grew up with. Now, it's not to say that these newer Bablats like this Pure Strike VS are bad. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think the Pure Aero 98 is the closest thing the tennis community has to an objective best racket for competitive matches. Ultimately, there's a reason I don't use it as my racket of choice. It's not that connected and I just don't have that much fun enjoying its experience. So when I found out that the Nova was being updated for 2023, a spark of hope lit up my beating red heart. I haven't tried previous versions of the Nova, so going in, I wasn't totally sure what to expect. But upon closer inspection, the beam shape of this Nova bears an unmistakable resemblance to the Drive Z Lite I used to use, with one small exception. The Nova has an ever so slightly thinner beam, clocking in at 23.5, 24.5, 23.5 compared to the Pure Drive's 23, 26, 23. Now, given my experience with the Elevates, where I found them to be very responsive with a lot of vibration, a characteristic that I've been missing from a lot of the modern power rackets, I did have some hope with these new Novas. Typically your thick beam rackets are going to have a pretty hollow feel. Muted or not, the Bablats that I grew up with did feel frustratingly hollow. This is because the chamber created by that thicker beam resonates sound a lot more than a thinner beam would. This is why according to Slinko's engineer, some rackets, including my own whiteout, are foam filled. Foam filling actually, well, every racket has a chamber and uh, the bigger the chamber, it creates a different uh, frequencies of sound. So you want to add the uh, foam into the rackets to, to kind of quiet down that chamber. The Nova is also foam filled, so you get a much more solid feel than you might with something like the Pure Drive or even the E-Zone 100. The solidity is intensified by the FS2 system, which mimics Head's twin tube technology from like a thousand years ago. And we all know how legendary those vintage heads feel. Anyway, this FS2 is really just structural ribbing built into the carbon fire layup of the frame. So you end up with multiple smaller channels rather than one like gaping cavern inside the beam. On court, this leads to a very uniform flex, a really solid feel, and a shockingly consistent response without being too boardy or stiff feeling. So the Nova stands in complete opposition to the variable flexes that we've seen dominating the market today. You've got like the shift that has insane torsional stiffness while simultaneously offering oddly soft lateral flex, and that's on purpose. You've got Yonex that has pretty soft throats, often really thin in the throat, and then much stiffer hoops. And Head is doing the exact same thing as Yonex with their Oxetic 2.0. They're softening the response in the yoke and handle while they use the graphene to stiffen other areas of the frame. And sure, we still have Bablat that is like generally uniformly stiff across the layup, giving you a pretty firm hitting experience, but most of their rackets just feel muted. They feel disconnected. The Nova is none of those things. It stands alone in the power segment, offering a uniform flex, a solid feel, and a consistent response. And of course, the ball connection just isn't going to be as deep as what you'd see with a thinner beam, like something with the Whiteout or the Pro Staff 97. But we're seeing a big bump in power and forgiveness compared to these control-oriented frames. 
The Nova is by no means a perfect racket. Spin is honestly pretty poor compared to rackets like the Extreme MP or the V-Core 100 and even the Bablat Pure Drive itself. Stability is also a far cry from segment leaders in the Ezone 100 and the FX 500. Instead, Diadem is offering us a player's take on the power racket. And if you're looking for a player's take on the sponsor of this video, that player's take is you. You are the sponsor of this video. Thank you so much for watching so far. I think it's now like 150 videos we've made for the channel. And I can't express my gratitude enough. To thank you for watching, I'm offering $5 off any of our racket or string consultations. So if you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me to help you find your new string setup, you can click the link in the description where you can claim that offer and sign up to our email list. In the email list, I want to really provide you with serious value. I'll send you sneak peeks, mini written reviews that I can't get a chance to make a full video on, behind the scenes info with all all of these projects that Simon, Ali, and I have on the go basically at all times. My goal here is really to just provide you with something that's going to be actually useful, some valuable information that you can't normally find anywhere else. So in its stock configuration, the Nova is lightning fast through the air. It's super whippy, and I was really able to play whatever tennis that I wanted to play on that day. While the 16x19 pattern is quite open, I never doubted the predictability of the string bed on aggressive shots. Yes, the launch angle is on the higher side, but it's consistently high. And regardless of the string setup I used, I tried three different setups. I never felt like the experience was launchy per se. It was not erratic at all. So furthering this idea of a player's power racket, Diadem also makes a tour version of the Nova, which has a heavier spec, a lower balance point, and on paper lines up pretty perfectly with my preferences. But oddly enough, I think the Tour suits a completely different class of player than the standard Nova. The standard Nova is really like a chameleon of a racket. It's just as happy to loop spinny balls as it is to drive flat ones. The Nova Tour, on the other hand, is a flat hitter's dream, which means I didn't really like it. I personally really struggle to find my groove with this racket, even when using a string I love in Slinko Confidential. I think the Nova Tour would be perfect in the hands of someone with an Eastern grip who hits pretty flat but might want a little bit more forgiveness now that it's time to hang up your old head micro drillers, Wilson 6-1. The weight distribution just works perfectly for a more linear swing path. Its high twist weight and low balance point means it feels whippy yet confidently stable through the stroke. The tour version of the Nova offers just something I wasn't expecting and something pretty surprisingly unique in the market. It's a power racket made for clean ball strikers with flatter strokes. I measured it to have a very beefy swing weight of 15.1 strong, so off-center plow through is also immensely strong despite that friendly 325 swing weight. So here's who I recommend the Novas for. It's for someone who wants a forgiving package with a consistent, solid, and gimmick-free feel. The Novas are for people who just want a decent, honest racket that does not hide behind weird marketing, player endorsements, or insane playing characteristics. I never played a point with the Nova and felt like the mistake I made could really be blamed on the racket. And that's coming from me, a racketaholic. I love blaming my rackets for all my mistakes. That's the whole point of this channel. Sure, the weight distribution on the Tour does not really fit my forehand at all, but it never behaved in a way that I didn't expect. And that's what I really hate about some rackets. It's when they behave in a way that you don't see coming that there's an issue for me. The Novas don't pretend to be anything they aren't and so they don't behave in ways you don't expect and I think that's incredibly refreshing to see in a power racket. So if you're considering the Nova or the Nova Tour, I had pretty good success with different string setups. I only tried polys because that's what works for my game but I can't imagine why. A hybrid wouldn't play great either. The first thing I tried was Diadem Pro X, which did feel great, fresh, but lost tension really fast. Confidential played amazingly. It adds to that solid feel while making sure there's enough vibrations that come through the racket so you feel really connected to every shot. But my personal favorite, I have to say, was Toraline Wasabi Pro Hybrid. I think it looks pretty good. This blue in this uh, diadem is pretty hard to match. Solstice so Power does not match this color like teal. But I think like from far away, 
the blue and the green combined, they look pretty good. So here with the Wasabi Pro X, really feels solid. It mutes the vibrations a little more than confidential, but you still get this great balance of spin and control. So if you'd like to try Wasabi Pro Hybrid or anything else from Toroline, you can use my link in the description to get 20% off. And any purchase you make through Toroline or any other of my affiliate links in the description will directly support the creation of future tennis content just like this. Personally, from Toroline, I'm really enjoying Enzo Pro. It's like a rounder, softer, Slinko Confidential has really good playability duration, just like Confidential does, but you got a lower launch angle from that round shape. So final thoughts. After my negative experience with the Elevates, I'm pretty happy to say that I can now recommend a Dunedin racket. I don't really like snubbing brands. I want everyone to do well. Uh, it's nice when the racket landscape is like actually competitive and you feel like these brands are really trying to like, first of all, listen to us as consumers, but then deliver on products that we say we want. Here's where I think the Nova stands in comparison to other 100 square inch rackets on the market. And so for future versions of the base Nova, I love to see a spec closer to the newest Auxetic 2.0 Speed MP or the old Aero Pro Drive original. I wanna see like a 325 to 330 strung swing weight with the lower twist weight. So we retain the great maneuverability of the Nova, but we have better plow through. And I get that the forgiveness and off-center performance is gonna take a hit, but I think that's fine. Like if you're shopping for a diadem, you're kind of a nerd already. You're willing to take that risk. I think diadem, audience probably skews a little bit more advanced than a lot of the other brands because they're a little bit more niche. So I don't mind sacrificing um, some ease of use for something that might deliver a little bit better for a more advanced player. And then in the tour version, I would really like to see a little more differentiation between the tour and the standard more than just weight. I think the weight setup was a good play for this racket, but I think it really would have worked well with like an 18 by 19 pattern. We all know these like semi dense patterns are really hot right now. And I think it would just really work better with the kind of flat stroke that I'm and really grooving with when I use the Nova Tour. Let me know if you want me to compare these to anything else in the comments. I'll reply to all your comments if you have questions.